One of my favorite quotes is from P.J. O'Rourke, who said, giving money and power to a politician is like giving liquor and car keys to a teenager. <laughs> it's a quote that gets to the recklessness and the selfishness we often associate with power and status. We see this association in popular culture all the time, from characters like Ebenezer Scrooge to James Bond villains. But are these stereotypes deserved? Or are we just jealous of people with more status than us? Research luminaries like Kathleen Voss have shown us that when people acquire power and status, when they interact with symbols of power and status, or even when they just think about power and status, it makes people less generous, more aggressive, more focused on themselves, less focused on others. It even changes them physically. Here's what I mean. I do behavioral research at Wright State University, and one of the things I research is financial decision making. In fact, I'm writing a book on it. And I research this because well, I've made a number of boneheaded financial decisions in my life. <laughs> and I don't think I'm alone in that. I think we all have a few of these that we'd like do-overs on. So I got together with a friend at Miami University, Eric Stenstrom, and we did a series of experiments looking at how handling money, which is the ultimate symbol of power and status, changes us physically and what behaviors result from that. So here's what we did. First, we had a group of male students drool into a cup. And then we had half of those students handle stacks of $20 bills, while the other half handled stacks of blank pieces of paper. And then we had them all drool into a cup again. <laughs> Finally, we had all the students gamble, which we rigged to make sure that everyone won. And then we would ask each student if they'd be willing to donate some or all of their winnings to charity. Now, your first question is probably, what's with all the drooling? <laughs> That was to measure testosterone levels in saliva both before and after students handled either money or paper. And doing this would enable us to tell if people who handled money experienced a rise in testosterone relative to those who handled paper. So why did we think a sex hormone like testosterone would be reactive to handling money? From the earliest days of man, testosterone has been responsible for sex drive, finding a mate, and fight or flight responses. It has fueled our competition for resources so that we could survive and reproduce. And key to that competition was status. The less status we had, the more we had to rely on and cooperate with others. But as we acquired status, we could think less about others and more about ourselves. And that dynamic is still with us today, except instead of evading T-Rexes or hunting woolly mammoths to exhibit your status to that special cave person you've had your eye on, we acquire and spend money. So how would this prehistoric dynamic factor into our experiments? Sure enough, those that handled money experienced a rise in testosterone that made them more aggressive and self-focused. They took bigger risks on the front end, and they were less likely to donate to charity on the back end. So the students handled money, testosterone went up, and they became more aggressive and self-focused. Now. We are not the first to look at the effects of power and status on testosterone and behavior. We just did it with money. Others have looked at things like stock market gains, athletic competitions, playing board games, even handling a gun. They all made testosterone levels rise, and that in turn made people more aggressive in a variety of ways, whether it was in the risks they took, the amount they were willing to share, or in the instance of people handling guns, the amount of hot sauce they put in someone else's drink when that person wasn't around. And that really happened. So now, the good news is that the effects of power and status are not universal. Different types of people and personalities respond differently to power and status. So more thoughtful and empathetic people tend to be less prone to these effects, while more impulsive or dominant people tend to be more. There's even research suggesting that women are less prone to these effects than men. And ladies, before you shoot a glance at the men sitting around you, notice that I said less prone rather than not prone at all. <laughs> so why should we care about this? Some of us, perhaps all of us, are frustrated. We look around and we see people in leadership positions acting only in their self-interest. We see business executives enriching themselves at the expense of the partners, shareholders, and employees they're supposed to be serving. And we see politicians furthering their own ambition while leaving their constituents worse off. We are surrounded 
by serious but solvable problems, yet we are saddled with many leaders who are able but unwilling to solve them, often in the name of preserving or furthering their own power and status. But there are things we can do to choose better leaders or if we experience a rise in status ourselves to be less self-focused. First, when evaluating someone for a leadership position, understand that more dominant personalities, and these are people who are combative, controlling, unquestioning, self-aggrandizing, are most likely to become more self-focused when put in a leadership position. Now, the difficulty for us is that we tend to be attracted to the confidence and charisma that also accompanies those personality types. Yet those are the personality types that are most likely to become more self-focused in a leadership position. Second, if you're a high-status person sitting in the audience right now, perhaps uncomfortably at this point, <laughs> you may be wondering, what can I do to be less self-focused. And if you were wondering that, congratulations. You've just taken probably the most critical step in being less focused on yourself and more on others. Just the mere act of periodically asking yourself if you're being fair or considerate to others is the best way to be more thoughtful about other people. Fairness requires consistent effort, especially when there are things in our environment like money, power, and status, inhibiting our tendency toward fairness. We must know that no matter what heights we reach or accolades we receive, we're all still works in progress. We are constantly changing. And money, money changes everything. <laughs>